This is the SAU Report, a program featuring interviews with the faculty, staff, students, and alumni of Southern Arkansas University in Magnolia. Welcome. I am Doreen Durham. And I am Anastasia Theodoridou. Our guests today are Dr. Alan Buffington, Assistant Professor of Music, and Professor Jerry Johnson, Chair of the Art Department. Welcome, Dr. Alan Buffington and Professor Jerry Johnson. Thank you. Professor Johnson, would you tell us what is your educational background? I received my undergraduate, my Bachelor of Arts in Commercial Art at Southwestern Oklahoma State University in a little town called Weatherford, Oklahoma. And I received a, a master's in art education there uh, also. And then later, after moving to uh, Magnolia, I commuted to Louisiana Tech and received a Master of Fine Arts in Graphic Design. Dr. Buffner, could you talk a little bit about your educational background? Uh, I, too, like Professor Johnson here, went to Louisiana Tech, received my Bachelor of Arts and Master of Arts uh, from Louisiana Tech in music education. Went, uh, taught for 15 years in public schools in Mississippi and Louisiana, and then went and received my doctorate in music education, or Doctor of Arts in music education at the University of Mississippi in Oxford, Mississippi. Professor Johnson, when did you first come to Southern Arkansas University? I believe it was 1988. I was teaching at Oklahoma State University, graphic design, and uh, I saw an ad up on the wall, it said SAU looking for a graphic design professor, someone to start the program, and I followed up with an interview and uh, made application, of course, and uh, it worked out for the best. <laughs> Dr. Bachner, what year did you come to SAU? Uh, I came here in the, uh, the fall of 95. Uh, I was at the University of Mississippi completing my doctorate and had just finished in May and got a, a job application and send it in and here I came. Uh, Dr. Buffington, how do you feel that classes in music and art have meshed or kind of fit together since the move into one building? I believe at the beginning it was a little uncomfortable, mainly due to the space. Mm -hmm. um, however, there are several of us, um, uh, Steve Oakes and I have done some collaboration and we're trying to get the art students and the music students working better together um, and uh, in a little more comfortable atmosphere. Uh, we're still a little cramped in space and we will be for, you know, until they add onto the building or something. But uh, I think right at the, this point in time that they're, they're, we're trying to work together and trying to do some things that involve both art and music students. Professor Johnson. From the art perspective, mm -hmm. how do you feel the classes have meshed together? Uh, since we don't really have classes that join together, it's really just a division of space. And I like Dr. Buffington thinks space is really the only issue. I think it's a, a wonderful thing to have music and art in the same complex. That never has been a point of contention. We like that idea because it's, I kind of like hearing a little music. I like seeing new folks around the art. It's neat to see the music people walking in and out of, among sculpture and paintings and it's, it's just as neat to see the uh, art students you know, around uh, the choir people and the, uh, the bands and so forth. It's just simply a space issue. We are hopeful that there'll be some added space for, uh, for both programs. Dr. Buffington, as you teach today's college students, can you remember back to your college years and is there a difference in the college student today and then? Well, I think, first of all, you have to look at the geographical area that we're in. The students that we get here at SAU are not the same students that we got at Louisiana Tech or, say, even at the University of Mississippi. They're, they're quite a different student. Uh, they're, they come from mainly rural backgrounds. Uh -huh. uh, and so, therefore, I don't really compare them that way. There's more apples and oranges. Uh, I think that a lot of times the, the values, they're not into uh, putting as much emphasis on, on their education as they are coming to school. And uh, uh, I know that when I came up that I spent every waking hour learning my craft and, 
and uh, I find sometimes that our students are not quite that dedicated, but I don't expect them to be as, as I am. Later on, they'll hopefully, before they get into the profession, will see the light and, and, and start working a little bit towards their craft a little harder. So. Professor Johnson, when you compare your college days and how you are a student, how the students are right now, do you see a lot of differences? There are very few students today who are as bad a student as I was <laughs> as an undergraduate. I've got to clarify that. Uh, I was always torn. I've always wanted to be an artist, uh, and I was torn between music and art. And I uh, always thought it was like two different worlds. I didn't realize that they're really one and the same. I mean, they're both a medium, you know, to communicate something about yourself or whatever you want to express. And uh, I could think when I grew up, I never really knew a professional artist other than art teachers. And I didn't really at that time have an inclination to be a teacher. So uh, I was just kind of confused. I wasn't an excellent student. I mean, I loved art, but those other classes, I'd rather be playing ball or foosball or whatever. But then I got a little bit older and hopefully a little bit wiser. And uh, I fell in love with the idea of, you know, let's finish this thing. And, uh, and of course, was rather successful in graduate school and my later years in my undergraduate degree. But students, I mean, I've got some great students, and I've got some who are yet to be birthed into something better. <laughs> but I, I'm hopeful for them. But I'm kind of like Dr. Buffett. I think it's more of a geographical, cultural thing. Uh, I can't compare the two different eras because there's some really great kids out there nowadays that are, that are just really sharp. Uh, Dr. Buffington, do you teach mostly classical in the music department, or does today's student enjoy uh, the current songs and the current rhythms? Uh, now, I, uh, I'll, I'll do like I do my fine arts class. <laughs> classical only counts for 150 years. So everything that's not popular is lumped into classical, usually. And we try to, to do away with that myth. <laughs> Um, I usually, in my classes, try to introduce all genres of music, uh -huh. uh, from Gregorian chant to African drum music to uh, even things from Paul Simon. We, we listen to musicals um, by Schoenberg we, uh, and also by uh, Andrew Lloyd Webber. Uh, I'm a big Andrew Lloyd Webber fan, and also listen to jazz and pop and stuff. And my studio, in the studio, I, I try to do some avant-garde, some things that are a little strange. It kind of pushes their, their envelope just a little bit, and it kind of pushes them mentally to grow. Uh, but we play the classics, the standard literature as well, but we also try to expand the horizons into new music that's coming out and not just limited to just the things that are there. Professor Johnson, in the study of art, are students free to express their own feelings or do they have uh, to follow a specific era of art? Uh, they're encouraged to express themselves. There's certain very basic foundational things. I mean, if you go into a drawing class, I mean, you may have to draw the figure, you may have to draw a vase, there's got to be some commonality in focus of what they're drawing, so there's some kind of measurement of progress. Uh, but as they mature in their skills, they become more and more free to uh, mature in their thinking, their creative process, and express themselves in whatever way. Uh, so yeah, I'd say they're, they're very free, and they're encouraged, and they're expected you know, to be creative, not just to be craftsmen, but to take it a step further and have good concepts and uh, personalize things. I don't have to agree with the concept, but it's still exciting to me and beautiful to see a concept that's communicated through a painting or whatever. Dr. Buffington, what difficulties did the music students have moving over into this other building? Was there enough room for the instruments or was there any difficulties? Uh, there were, mainly with space. Uh, we, when you take two viable departments that are, that are have nice sized buildings, uh -huh. they were constructed for that and you move them together and there's no change in the amount of space just they've been just redrawn and re-walled. Re um, some ensembles got uh, some extra space, needed extra space in, some, in rehearsal halls but we also in the process lost a couple of classrooms so we're and the 
we're in smaller rooms and the soundproofing is not quite there so it's kind of it's kind of loud between uh, especially on the second floor uh, and there again I think that's basically it's the soundproofing and and just some things now that the soundproofing is supposed to be handled this summer they're uh -huh. supposed to put in some more so that basically was the I think the big thing that cramped our style basically back when we started and uh, we we're slowly trying to work to eliminate that. Professor Johnson, after the renovation, were there any difficulties for the art students? There's, uh, there are some difficulties and just a loss of space. Uh, uh, I guess I could iterate those. I mean, some of them would be, for, for example, be a printmaking room. We don't have, we have printmaking coming up next fall, but there's not a space designated yet. Uh, the president gave the charge to the dean and the vice president, and I guess to us too, to try to locate. And we've been looking high and low, trying to find a space. Uh, Printmaking is very specialized, like a lot of studio courses. It has to meet OSHA requirements. There's certain fumes that are toxic. We're working with nitric acids, and, mm -hmm. and to really do that, but it's a very foundational course for an art major, where you do engraving, metal etching, and that kind of thing. So, but basically we'll have to just find a space. It doesn't have to be a clean, neat space, but it has to be well ventilated and have plumbing in it for sinks and so forth. Uh, that's probably the biggest one, that and uh, uh, public school art uh, was just kind of a general, a multi-purpose type room that's no longer in existence. So it's being shared with sculpture. So they're doing public school art things kind of where, you know, there's drill presses and saws and a, uh, just heavy kind of equipment that we'd use in sculpture class. It's kind of awkward. Mm -hmm. uh, but we're hopeful that that's going to be resolved, you know, in the near future. And uh, so we're just living with it. We don't have to agree with every decision, <laughs> but I know I'm not, I don't know everything. I don't see the bigger picture. So we just trust that uh, all that's going to work out. So, uh, Professor Johnson, um, was there any seniors? that would be graduating in May that because of the printmaking didn't get a chance to do that course, or is that a required course? Uh, yeah, printmaking is a required art core course, uh -huh. whether you're graphic design, art education, or uh, studio art, it's required. Uh, yeah, there probably are a few seniors who kind of slipped through and didn't get it because we postponed the class uh -huh. due to you know the reconstruction. Uh, but like I say, it's gonna be offered again in the fall and uh, maybe it's a shame for those three or four students who graduated and didn't get that opportunity. Uh, but they took some other courses. They may have took a second sculpture course or a second painting course or something else. It wouldn't be equal, but it, I would not say that they got a, a subpar education because yeah. of it. Dr. Buffington, what are some of the qualities a music student should have? Well, first of all, they should have a love for music. Uh, I have a, I had a, a former student who, who wanted me to make that decision for her, whether she should go into music or whatever she should go into. And, and the, my advice to them is if, if when you get up in the morning that's all you can think about doing, then by all means do it. If you think about something else, go do something else. Uh, they need to be able to, to perform on their instrument, whether voice, piano, uh, woodwinds, brass, percussion. Um, it was. It would be very helpful if they actually knew some theory before they got here. Um, maybe a little music history if they took an appreciation class in high school, uh, and that helps. And it it helps them further along a lot quicker than students who have never had anything but decided they just want to come here and major in music. Uh, they f usually find it very difficult if they don't have a, a very strong musical background. Professor Johnson, I understand you're a man of music and art, and uh, you had a decision to kind of make which way I guess you would be going with music or art. Mm -hmm. What was it that kind of tipped the decision for you? Can you tell us anything about it? Well, I'm not trying to correct you, but I mean, I think music is art. Yeah. So as far as a visual art, performing, I was a musician for a number of years. For about 10 mm -hmm. years, I had my own band. We were in Oklahoma. We did three albums. We were rather successful in our genre of music. Uh, uh, certain personal circumstances happened. Uh, I don't know how much interest this is, but I mean, I, I was diagnosed with cancer, mm. and 
my wife and I were, you know, really thinking seriously about a family and, uh, you know, you don't, being in a rock band, you don't have medical insurance. <laughs> it's not part of the uh, yeah. fringe benefits. And uh, anyway, a lot of decisions and we just made a decision. I always loved art. So even when I was in music, I did it like our posters and our ticket designs, album covers, all of that stuff, t-shirts. So that's where I really fell in love. And really, I like both vehicles for expressing. So. I still do music, you know, on the side. I write songs and stuff, so it's uh, it's not completely out of okay. here kind yeah. of thing. Dr. Bafakna, could you talk a little bit about uh, how the musical sound and the written notes came about? You're talking about the clay pot drums? Yeah. Okay. Uh, we, uh, Steve Oaks uh, did a master's thesis on uh, clay pot water drums or udu drums or mbiwi drums and there's a several different names they come from they're indigenous to west africa and also to india and they come about they're they're usually fired they're sculpted and holes cut inside they have a spout on them and they're and they're fired just in, usually in a regular fire well these are thrown on the wheel he came to me and said i have these drums for you and we were trying to at this time think about things to get the art students and the music students to collaborate on some things. And so I even went down to the art department and said, okay, get, and I wanted to do some sounds of uh, art equipment, uh, like hammers and drills and things. And I was going to incorporate this into a composition for concert band and art instruments and have the art students play these. And so I went about trying to figure out what to do, and he came up with these, uh, these uh, drums, these clay pot water drums, and he made three of them. I have three of them in my office, um, and I've been studying on how to play them and this type of thing, and I'm incorporating right now, I'm working on a piece called Homage, uh, which will incorporate these, these clay pot water drums into the music, and it will be for uh, clay pot water drums along with indigenous other instruments to Africa, uh, uh, other ethnic percussion and concert band and so this is a piece I'm working on right now and uh, I have to figure out a, a, an interesting I have to really actually make up my own notation to uh, to show which sounds go where and so that's that's what's happening. Uh, do you use the uh, computer to uh, print or help you with the music scoring of the music Yes. Uh, first of all, I, I, if you go into my office, I've got a scratch pad that I scratch things down on. And then I take that and I put it into the computer and I see it and I can play it back and hear the sounds as, as they are being played back so I know that there are no wrong notes and I can clean up everything. And I can also run them through the synthesizer and get pretty close to a, an accurate uh, accounting for the instruments. I can have it as a full string orchestra or I can have it with orchestra and percussion or I can have it with concert band with percussion instruments and and duplicate these sounds. Of course now they're electronic so they don't sound exactly mm -hmm. like uh, human beings and there are things that you have to take into consideration with with humans playing instruments more so than than yeah. computers. But yes uh, and have been doing have been doing this for for several years now and have students that are now interested in doing it. So we're using a lot of computer technology in the composition in the music department. Professor Johnson, coming back to the clay pots, uh, could you tell about the collaboration of the clay pots having been created by the art department and with the help of the music department? Will this become an art music piece? Uh, I'm not sure what the, the end result will be. I'll know at the collaborative effort is always a positive thing between the two disciplines. And I know that, uh, as Dr. Buffington mentioned, Steve Oaks really was the catalyst for that kind of, that's what he did when he was in graduate school. He made these things, at least that was part of what he did. And they're really interesting. They have an interesting tonality, and each one of them is unique, visually and audibly. So he passes it on to the musician, and I'm anxious to see what happens. The collaboration has just begun, and I can see that in lots of different ways. I mean, I, I've seen uh, uh, fine arts students coming out, and you know, they may have to interpret, they may be in fine arts music, they may be trying to interpret a visual art piece and compare a re Renaissance painting with a Renaissance uh, Rococo or whatever style of music and see what the correlations are, because there are strong ties. So I think there'll be lots and lots of collaboration in the future. Right? be exciting. 
Dr. Buffington, what are some of the future musical performances that SAU students can look forward to? Uh, we have actually next week on Thursday evening, uh, the, the 16th of April, a concert band slash jazz band will be on the same program since I do both groups. And it's our chance to get both of them done at the same time. Uh, and that'll be at 7.30. It's free to the public. We're here. Um, we're doing a, an interesting piece called Trail of Tears, which uh, is uh, about the Trail of Tears. And part of it came through Arkansas. And, I've, and here recently they've released a lot of articles, and, uh, and the students have really gotten into this particular piece. In this piece, they actually speak Cherokee uh, during the performance, so it's kind of a it's kind of an interesting piece of music, and, it, and it, I try to pick something that's uh, a little challenging but a little off the beaten path. Uh, as well as we're going to play the good old standard marches and and some other concert literature, and then the jazz ensemble, uh, which has improved uh, greatly since I've been here, uh, they've improved every semester, and uh, they're a good bunch of folks. And we are going to be doing some old standards from Ira Gershwin and George Gershwin to some hip hop funk pieces and as well as just some just some down home blues. So uh, and that'll be at seven thirty uh on that, that evening. Uh there are the Masterworks Festival, which will be combined with the choir and uh the wind ensemble will be the first week in May. The first, uh, it should be on a Friday or Thursday or Friday evening. I'm not sure exactly when the date is, but uh, we are constantly having those types of things on campus. Professor Johnston, according to the article written in the Banner News, uh, one of the problems is the lack of soundproofing. How would you comment on that? Well, I think it's yet to be determined if that's going to be resolved this summer about the soundproofing. There are still some areas, I mean, practice rooms and offices aren't soundproofed uh, just really tightly, and it causes a bit of disturbance in some areas. For example, I mean, we typically do critiques of artwork out in the corridors, which were designed to be an extension of a classroom space. They're not just hallways where you hang artwork and decorate the walls, but we do our critiques. They'll line up their paintings, their designs, whatever. And But here comes... Uh, Dr. Buffington's beautiful clarinet saying, I mean, it's, it's beautiful, you know, but uh, with the right amount of balance, you know. <laughs> but you just simply sing your critiques and go on, I guess. <laughs> but no, there's a little bit of disturbance, a little bit from the band room upward to the painting room. What I'm saying, it's just, it's not horrible, don't get me wrong. It's just, uh, I think those are things we'll work out and just make them perfect. Professor Johnson, I know that each month the exhibit hall has usually exhibits an mm -hmm. artist, mm -hmm. and I think right now the um, some shirts are hanging in there. Could you tell us a little bit about that and what is on for next month? Okay. Well, currently, I wouldn't say in the purest sense this is an art exhibit right now. Typically, we have art exhibits, that, but Impact, I believe, sponsored this. Uh, uh, Correct me if I'm wrong. Is it Women's History Month? And part of this, the the programming was to have uh, uh, women who've experienced some kind of abuse, whether it's verbal, physical, emotional, whatever, uh, battering. Uh, they had an opportunity to anonymously decorate a T-shirt, and we hang. It's called Operation Clothesline, and that's interesting because they get to vent themselves a little bit, uh -huh. and express their. In some instances, I've noticed was express their forgiveness, was I thought would be. I didn't expect that. But they're putting those expressions on a shirt. They're not artists. They're just they're ordinary folks. Uh, next uh, week, uh, James Thomas, who is one of our, uh, he was our outstanding senior art student. He's going to have his uh, graduate show or his graduation show. That's going to be super. He's going to graduate school in sculpture. Uh, and typically every month we have a professional exhibit. There will be lots of activity this summer. I know there's going to be music camp. There's going to be our first art camp. Uh, during the month of June, so that's something that viewers might be interested in too if they've got a 10th, 11th, 12th grader yeah. uh, to check those out. We do children's workshops, but there's always a professional sculptor, printmaker, illustrator, designer, potter, you name it, you know, there's some kind of show in there each month. Dr. Buffington, uh, do you feel the practice rooms are just too so small for the students? Um, have you heard any complaints yet? Oh yeah, the, stu the students have complained. They, they're, they're getting a feeling of claustrophobia. Uh, they are small, uh, especially when you put a piano in them and there's barely enough room to move around. Uh, 
but we have to, uh, we had to put the pianos in there for fear that they would be left in the other building unattended uh, of course the with the uh, power and things over in, in different parts of the building not being consistent like heating and cooling and and that type of things and it wears on the instrument so we had to move them over here and to give mm -hmm. students an opportunity to practice uh, they are quite small and, and some of the students have voiced their their concerns about this but I, I don't see anything we can do about it in the near future unless things are added on and we hope that sooner or later that that will happen Professor Johnson, I understand that there are three dimensional design classes, mm -hmm. uh, being that the, there are three dimensional, not three classes, three dimensional, right. okay, <laughs> creating sculptures that will be exhibited in hot springs. Um, could you tell us about the sculpture and will this be the first time that they will be exhibiting this, that Southern Arkansas University mm -hmm. will be exhibiting something in hot springs? As uh, most Arkansans know, our Hot Springs is really a hotbed for art mm -hmm. activity and it's really well renowned, really nationally. And uh, they have a celebration of the arts each spring. And uh, I can't remember if it's the last week in April, first week in May, but it's in the near future. And last year there's five universities or colleges that were invited to have their students participate in installing an outdoor sculpture. And I'm proud to say that we were the only university that was invited back. They did such an excellent job under uh, Mr. Stephen Oak's direction. And uh, they're composing two or maybe three installations that are going to be during the celebration of the arts. Dr. Buffington, do you feel that the music department is growing and does it have a space to grow right now under the conditions? There, there again, once again, we, we don't have enough space, but uh, we're hoping that in the near future that will happen, as the art department is also growing. Uh, and I think larger than most people thought it would grow. Uh, we are getting more people in the music department, and we are steadily growing, and we're working as, as we get quality students in. And over the past three years, our qual the quality of students that we've been getting have been better. Uh, and you can tell that by the, the, the bands and the choirs and things that, uh, that you hear. I mean, the quality of the, the ensembles are getting better uh, and our students are getting better. And we're hoping to have a good recruiting year this year and to have even more. As a matter of fact, that's, I've got to do that uh, auditions this week. So uh, we know that uh, we're getting more students and better quality students. So uh, as we grow, we're going to have to give somewhere. So we're hoping that the, the administration will, will meet with those um, steps to, to solve these problems. Yeah. Uh, with the computer system and computers and internet, I would expect that you probably each have home pages. And Professor Johnson, would you answer, do you have a home page for the art department? We have a website. Uh, www.saumag.edu slash art and uh, it's excellent and attached to a link to our website it's very sharp it's designed by our uh, painting professor believe it or not uh, he's really into computers uh, Ralph Larman and uh, he also does what's called the art studio chalkboard which is an instructional piece that goes out you know, over the internet mm -hmm. and they can actually get instruction in two-dimensional design and figure drawing and so forth and that was received Yahoo's uh, site of the day. It's received all kinds of notoriety for it, so we're proud about that. Uh, but yeah, the internet is where it's at. For our students, they're really getting into web page design. And uh, I'm proud of the music's website, too. They've got a, a really sharp one that's just uh, been online. Dr. Buffington, you also created the music homepage, is that correct? Yes. Could you talk a little bit about it? Yes, it, um, it was um, started, I started it last, September, I think, uh, they, they asked everybody to in the education department to come up with a home page. And so I, took, I just went off with it and I was just learning how to get into home pages and how to, how to design them. And I came up with some interesting graphics and put them on there and we uh, uh, have just made all the necessary things to make sure that it works and then we got it up and it's now running and then it would break down then we'd have to run it back and redo some things. So. Uh, finally, I, I'm glad to say that it's up and running and we haven't had any more problems with it. But, uh, and the School of Ed used 
my design to design the School of Ed homepage. So, uh, and I personally have my own homepage. Uh, okay. So it's uh, interesting. I'm, I'm really getting into it. Our students are getting into it also. Well, we want to thank you, Dr. Alan Buffington and Professor Jerry Johnson, thank for you. being our guest today. You're welcome. Thank you. I am Doreen Durham. And I'm Anastasia Theodoridou. Thanks for watching. The SAU Report is a production of broadcast journalism students in the Department of Theater and Mass Communication at Southern Arkansas University in Magnolia.